Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. Another mystery kit from Tech Beach Inc. He sent me this and it has a note attached. Already started this, hope I've not bodged it too badly. Well, I'll be the judge of that. It's a one amp power supply by Velman and it's a K1823. So if you're playing along at home, you can probably buy this kit from your local stockist, well, I'm just going to say, probably in the UK, Maplin or CPC. Oh, he's left all of the fun bits for me to do. It looks like actually the worst has been uh, done. I've just sort of turned on my power. Um, I can say power supply, no, soldering iron, that's what you hear in the background. Let's see, uh, he says it started, but he hasn't really um, attached too many things. So let's have a quick zoom in, see what we've got. So we've got a, a sort of uh, a strip here with four diodes and a resistor. It's quite interesting in that it's mixed. So you've got diodes and a resistor. So they must be producing these in some reasonable quantity. Standard ceramic cap, probably a power regulator of some description. LM3171. Let's see, what's the voltage supposed to be? That's the instructions in Italian. That's not going to help us at all. Anything in English, please? Here we go. The easy way to power your projects. So here we go, LM317. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It, it, it has not be cooled if used for small powers. Nice. So what I'm going to guess is basically it's an adjustable voltage regulator and it'll be adjusted by this. And that's really all we need to know. It's not one of the fixed ones where it say outputs 5 volts. It probably has a sort of wider voltage range. And uh, that's we adjust it by the twiddly twiddly. And in fact, it does have something here. Maximum DC voltage output. So it seems to go from 3 to 35 volts, just obviously depending on what you feed it in. So interesting I think we're just going to turn yeah you know, put it together that's the bit we're really concerned about now I can't see behind the footprint to see if this electrolytics put in very well but I'm just going to zoom in for you to show you though it's not actually soldered quite to the board you see it's still loose so I can actually clean that up and we'll pop the electrolytic app just to have a look at the footprint underneath it um, I should be really using solder sucker solder wick but I might just see if I can just squeeze it out we've got the danger of course that just through heating it we'll uh, solder it by accident <laughs> hopefully that won't happen so electrolytics are an interesting one to sort of remove they're sort of quite big components you can kind of rock them so that's what I'm doing here I'm sort of doing one side rocking it other side rock it be gentle you don't want to damage your PCB um, so there is a little positive right there and that's the negative strip, so we're going to put it in that away. Just see if there's any cleanup needed. That's all good. Um, oh yeah, there's two smaller electrolytics actually. Let's pop those in because they're going to be easier to put while we're there. We'll leave the big old electrolytic till the end. That one. And another one. I just thought of something. Um, something that makes a hell of a lot of sense now if you know that I'm always sort of moaning that I never remember what polarity you know these legs are and we can see that the long leg is positive so I've got my board here why don't I just write that here long leg positive that's just uh, that's gonna save me so much time now every time I get confused have a look at that. Long leg positive. I cannot believe it's taken me so long to just work out that little trick. Right, just gonna. We're just gonna tack solder these electrolytics in place because then I'm gonna flip it over, push them down. So I'm just pushing there, applying some pressure from the back, melt the solder, make sure it's hitting the deck. To be honest, they're both pretty good already. So we'll just continue with the old soldering. And while I'm at it, I can see the other sort of joints aren't particularly well made. 
in fact they're sort of ball balling up so I'm just going to go through and just touch those up while I'm at it um, quick check yeah they're nothing that can have been put in wrong so we don't need to remove those components now the symptom here is not enough heat basically on the pad when they're being soldered so if you've got your components at home and they're looking like this just apply more solder and just wait you can see there I'm just waiting you can, you'll see it flow the solder will flow It'll be quite liquid flow onto the pad and then when the pad is entirely covered in solder it's done just like that get rid of these legs we don't need those anymore so how about some diodes so diodes have a polarity but they're clearly indicated on the PCB can you guess which way round they go? Of course you can. Pop those through. So this is a nice little circuit really. These power regulators are um, they tend to be quite easy to use. It, I tend to use them fixed voltage so if I've got a need for a 5 volts power regulator in a circuit I'll just buy a 5 volts and they don't tend to need as many ancillary components they've put a lot of um, a lot of components on this one so I guess it's quite a nice power supply so the idea is that it's probably removing noise and stuff like that I mean there's no need normally for huge electrolytics like that apart from if you're going to be doing some sort of smoothing or power conditioning and that's clearly what this does I suspect if I go through the manual there's going to be even a description of the circuit and why it does that so I'm not going to of course <laughs> What do you think I am? I'm not a madman, but you can at home. That, that could be quite nice because I'll give you an example. I was just thinking now, I've got my whole video camera set up above the bench here. I use batteries and I have a pack of probably about five camera batteries and camera batteries are not cheap. If you go have a look at the website, they're definitely not cheap, especially original ones. You can get sort of aftermarket ones, which to be honest, I've got a few, but they're not quite as good. Um, the problem is, camera battery can run out any time and if you're doing a long video this one's probably not going to be too long um, then that could be a lot of work because you might not even know it's uh, died so I thought well why don't we hook this up to a power supply and then I sort of um and ah because I go well maybe the power supply won't be good enough quality and it'll introduce noise and most power supplies you buy well I buy on eBay are going to be dirty nasty noisy power supplies but this in a box, for example, might just uh, solve that. So you certainly could try that and see if there's any audio ripple. Just noticed here, by the way, that this connector is sitting a bit proud. So let's just let's just sit that down while we're there. Should we check the other one? The other one's fine. Ceramic cap C1. Oh, that's firm. Is, uh, it's a nice quick build actually. I know it had a couple of bits already on it, but even so, it would have been quick. I'm just going to again tack that, make sure. Whenever you uh, try to cheat by not tacking these down, it's almost inevitable that you're going to get a component protruding too much. I just like death and taxes and components not sitting properly. I just actually I was just sort of cleaning up these solder solder sort of tabs here but I accidentally put some on our uh, electrolytic that we're going to push through in a moment that's not particularly uh, useful at this stage yeah there's loads of literature with this I just sort of noticed across my desk strewn across my desk there's all these multi language uh, manuals for it that's the difference of course by getting a kit from a decent vendor rather than eBay because eBay you won't well you're lucky if you get a manual and if you get one it's not going to be in English but you know I don't mind that I like the challenge but if you're trying to learn something that's not the optimal way of learning it we're almost there look at that I think we can probably do our uh, big old electrolytic now make sure the polarity is right it's not going to go anywhere because we don't have clean holes so let's clean those holes just 
scooching around my office with my little eyeball, solder sucker here. Um, here's a good uh, tip. This is a totally jam solder sucker. Now we've got this little pot that's have a look why. Certainly a totally filled solder sucker. So if you've got a solder sucker that's jammed, just take it out and put the needle in the wrong way. And that's often all you need. I'm not going to do it now, but a good old bang on the desk often helps to loosen up that crud. Be careful how you dispose of it. Get rid of that. You don't want any of that falling on your desk ready to get uh, dashed into your future projects. Good, that's clean. I'll just show you why you want to get be careful of solder suckings. Look, see right there? That bit there, there's a piece. So if you imagine you're working on a power supply, or which we actually are, and uh, a bit of crap like that gets in, it's going to cause you all sorts of mischief. Electrolytic, here we go. Plus and minus. Yeah, its leg is a little bit bent. Let's see if we can fix that up. Come on now. It's really weird. One of the legs just does not want to go. It's not. It's not straight, basically. Um, it's got a bit of a twist. Let's see if we have any tools to help us de-twist this one. We'll try our tweezers. The legs are also a tiny bit short. Come on now. There we go. That's sitting nicely all the way in. anywhere. Give it a little trim though. And that's it, the final bit. So you can see there's a white line here. That means of course this is a, a heatsink thing but that's the way around it goes but it means you can also mount this against a lump of metal. Or in this package you get quite a, light, uh, quite a lot of quite nice clip-on heatsinks that just slide on over the top and they're really just um, a few pennies. So if you're going to be working with any of these larger regulator. I think these are, what are they, TO220s package. Um, invest in a handful of those heat sinks because you'll never know when you're going to need them. And that, as they say, is that. Let's uh, trim the final legs. Yeah, it all looks pretty good. So we have the in and the out. So let's test it on our bench. So we've got a bench supply, supplying about 12.8 volts at the moment. Um, so the input is 5 to 24 volts AC or 5 to 35 volts DC, but there's no uh, polarity marked. I think this is very similar to a um, kit I made quite recently, uh, one of my Chinese kits, actually. It was weird, though. I think if you give it DC, that does kind of require it to be a particular way around on the polarity but we'll find out let's pop our roll of solder there keep that locked on the bench and then we'll get our multimeter turning on the bench power supply so the bench power supply is on but it's putting out 12 volts but it's not using up any current there's hardly any current actually I'm going to check the it says it's in so out Nothing. Going to have a little twiddle of our pot here. Nope. So let's try flipping these around. So as I said, it's got, uh, you can see those four diodes act as a bridge rectifier. So if you're giving an AC signal, ah, 
All right, just going to clamp these in properly. Oh, that's weird. Why isn't that working? Ah, they've been fully, fully screwed up. There we go. If you give it um, an AC signal, it will be rectified with those that bridge re rectifier. But I've not really had a look to see what happened to the bridge rectifier of a DC. I mean, the DC should just pass straight through. Come on, come on. So perhaps that's why there's so many conditioning uh, components necessary because it's dealing with AC rather than DC. That could be the uh, case. Right, let's see. Hooray! So we're giving it 12 volts and it's putting out 10 volts. And I'm going to just turn this up. So I'm giving it 26 volts. Yeah, it, does, it just seems to be matching it, doesn't it? It doesn't seem to be doing anything, but yeah, okay. So 17 volts in, let's see what it gives it out. I guess it's it doesn't have a reference. So yeah, I can wind that down at 1.2 volts. Yeah. So what I found with this, this so this is this works, I mean, that's it, that's all it does. But what, what's really weird with these, and um, I'll tell you why it's weird. Okay, let's take that all off. Turn off all our power supplies. The reason it's weird is that when you use these sorts of components, you always expect them to be, you know, like a 5 volt version, 12 volt output things. These adjustable ones, they're adjustable, but they seem to be biased to whatever's coming in. So the relationship between the variable resistor and the other components and this, this component doesn't set it like hard set it, like it sees, uh, if it sees 500 ohms, it means it's 5 volts. Um, it's, it's, it's a trim against what's coming in. So, it, it, you know, if, if on the other components, basically, if you give them, a, if you've got an LM805, which is a 5 volt one, if you give it 12 volts in, or 9 volts in, or 10 volts in, or whatever, you'll always get 5 volts out. But on these sorts of power supplies, you can get varying sort of output on this. So before you hook it up to your device, you have to adjust it to make sure you're getting, say, the 5 volts you want from that. And then if you then change the input voltage, your your five volts could vary as well. So you know, be careful with these. But yeah, that's a, a nice little kit. Thank uh, thank you, um, Tech Beach Inc. for sending this. Um, you didn't do too badly a job. I think um, you've seen enough of my videos now, and I've worked on a couple of your little projects to show you how to go about soldering these in the future. I think you'll uh, give it a go. And look at this old fat thing. It'd be no, it'd be interesting to know. You know what's the limits of this and then have a project if you've got a project for this uh, please uh, Twitter about it when I send it back to you and let me know what how you got on with it hope this has been of some use to you or you guys at home please share uh, subscribe and like if you're that way inclined always leave a comment down below let me know uh, your views on these and if you know the inner workings of this type of regulator just feel free to drop drop me a line down below in the comments or Twitter as ever thank you for watching Oh, I always forget, always forget. There we go, saved.